What's up, YouTube? It's your girl, Ayana, the Crafty Notary. And I'm here for a couple of things today. As you can see by the title, I have a story time for you. But I also wanted to mention today is Wednesday. Tomorrow is Thursday. And I'm having my A to Z loan signing course tomorrow at 7 p.m. That's the name that I decided to call it. The complete loan signing course A to Z will be happening tomorrow at 7 p.m. If you have not signed up, please see the description down below. Um, I have made the decision to um, give a set of loan documents um, with the class. I'm also gonna have the nine requirements handout for the class as well. So there's gonna be a couple of takeaways from the class to get you started. Um, this class is for anyone who is doing loan signing or certified as a loan signing agent but has not done a loan signing yet, either because you're too scared to get out there or you just don't feel ready yet, this class is for you. It's also for people who have already done some signings and there's a couple of forms that trip you up. This class is for you as well. My class is centered on Florida documents, refinance documents. So if, if that's what you're into, then get signed up for the class. It's only one more day. And uh, it won't be offered live again, but it will live as a course on my website. So it'll be more about that. So now that I've gotten that out the way, the housekeeping issues, um, or housekeeping things, it's not an is issue. <clears throat> Let me get some water. Today, I want to give you a story time. And one of the reasons why I'm giving this story time is because um, I've had this conversation now twice and I just determined that this is definitely something that I wanted to share on my YouTube. And as you guys may have already seen from some of the other videos, I absolutely loathe the term lowball, um, lowball fees. And I absolutely cannot stand when more seasoned notaries or more other notaries in general um, discourage new notaries from taking signings and gaining experience because of lowball fees. And the term they always use to try to pull at your heartstring is to know your worth, right? But when you're starting out as a notary, you don't know what that worth is, <laughs> all right? You may know what your worth is as a person. You know what kind of work you can do. But as Mark Will said in his L in the LSS course, you don't know how much you're worth in this industry because you haven't done the work yet. You haven't proven yourself yet. And why would some title company want to pay you uh, $100, $120 when you're not maybe not even worth that or you're not doing the work? And another reason why I decided to tell this story was because I have another friend in, in the in this industry who had posted a video had a video posted in her group where um a scheduler for a, a signing service, um, you know, mentioned that, you know, they went out of their way to pay someone that higher fee and the person just completely dropped the ball to the point to where the, per the, 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 the signer went out of town. They didn't hear from notary, they went out of town. So that's a whole, a whole issue. And it's one of the reasons why I don't like using that term or I don't like that term. And usually when something gets under my skin, when it's a grit under my skin, I kind of reevaluate why that is. Like what's driving that with me? Like why am I doing that? That's just who I am. It just happens to, you know, happens that way. So I actually thought about it. And here's why that, why I cannot stand that so much. So back in 2016, I worked for a company where I was required to be a, um, a real estate agent. And at that time they paid for me to get my real estate agent um, license. And then I went on to get a broker's license and they paid for that as well. Well, come 2016, after I worked for them for a few years, they decided to lay everybody off. And so I was one of those people that got laid off. And so as devastated as I was to be laid off, I didn't know what to do next. And so I thought, well, I'll just go and start doing real estate. Since I already have the license, I've never really tried it. I've been licensed in Michigan before, and I've been licensed as an agent in Arizona, and I had never sold one house. I've always done property management. So 
I decided to go into the sales space and I interviewed some brokers and there was one right near my house and I decided to join that brokerage. Well, in the brokerage, there was classes for you to learn. There was actually a coach and that coach had a class every every morning that I got up for every day and went over to just so I can glean any piece of information on how to get my business started as a real estate agent, how to get my first deal. Well, he gave out a, a fantastic idea and I followed that idea and actually got an appointment. So I go on the appointment and the person, uh, the guy who um, I met with um, was asking me all of these questions. Of course, I had no experience selling a home, but I had to zhuzh it up, right? Because I, I didn't, I hadn't sold one, um, and so I nailed the listing. So I got the listing. So immediately after the listing, um, I got the listing. I had thirty days to get the house sold. That was part of the deal that I had sent him in my letter. So I had thirty days to get the house sold. So I paid for pictures to have the house re-photographed because the pictures he had on the MLS, uh, he was a for sale by owner prior to uh, me coming in. The pictures were, were not doing his home justice. So I had the home re-photographed and it looked much brighter and lighter. It was really nice. I uh, went door to door in his neighborhood telling all of his neighbors that this house was up for sale and if they wanted to choose their neighbor, they could, um, they could definitely uh, refer anybody that they knew that were looking uh, to me. I held open houses that I paid for out of pocket. And lo and behold, on one of the open houses, a couple walked through and they were in love with the house. Now, they were sent to the open house by another agent in my brokerage office, okay? Keep that in mind. So they loved this house and we were right down to the wire as far as time for me to get this house under contract. And they put in an offer. I was excited to get this offer. I go back to the seller, give him the offer. Nope, he doesn't want to sell at that price. He wants more money. And I'm like, what do you mean you want more money? Like they're, you know, they're right there. He's like, I want more money. You need to decrease your fee. And I'm like, uh, hmm, okay, let me think about that. So I go back to the office and I bring up the scenario and everybody in the office, all the other agents in the office that have sold homes, the, everybody was just like, never decrease your fee. Never go down on your fee. Never do it. So I go back to the seller and I stand firm on my fee. Now, knowing what I know today, what I could have done was went to the other agent and negotiate a reduction in the fee overall, and we could have split the difference. But nobody gave me that advice. This is my first one. They just told me, don't budge on your fee. Know your worth. Don't budge on your fee. So I didn't. And we didn't go under contract. Well, 30 days came up, and I actually had a cruise scheduled like right after that. So I went on the cruise not knowing what the heck was gonna happen, um, if the people would go under contract or not, or if he would budge, didn't know what happened. But when I got back, the listing was not only expired, but the house was went under contract. It went under contract with the other agent's clients and she took the entire fee. So she reduced the, since she didn't have, since there was not two agents, Two agents didn't have to be paid. So she actually reduced her fee and she got closed the deal and she got paid. Now, she was more seasoned than I was and she wasn't a part of the people that said, don't reduce your fee because she's, she was not working out of that particular office. But I walked away with nothing, nothing. I paid for pictures. I paid for all of the open house, refreshments, all of that stuff. I put my blood, sweat, and tears into canvassing the, the neighborhood and I got nothing, absolutely nothing. I was devastated. And not only devastated for just a couple of days, I was devastated for years after that. Very salty, very salty. And it really hurt my feelings that 
she sold this house to their clients and didn't offer me anything. Not one red cent in the compensation. Not thank you for showing the house to my clients while I wasn't there. Here's 50 bucks. Nothing. I got nothing. And so this is why I feel like this bothers me when folks say, know your worth and don't take a lowball fee because they don't know your business. They don't know what you put into being where you are today. It takes money to get a commission. It takes money to sign up for the signing uh, course. It takes money to get insurance, a bond, supplies, a printer, a computer. It takes money and it takes time for you to put that into becoming where you are today. And for someone to say to you before you've even had a deal, even had a signing, even been able to prove what you're worth, for them to say to you, if you get it at this particular price, don't take it, it's wrong. And if you're one of those people, because they're out there, and if you're watching this video, it's wrong. It's wrong for you to do that. Now, you can say things that are much more encouraging, or you can even say, I wouldn't do that. But if you're starting your business, do what's best for you. Because obviously, and obviously it's not the right word, because it is true that once you become more seasoned and once you know what you're doing and once you know what kind of work you put out there and you don't make mistakes and you don't do this and you don't do that and you get the stuff back on time, then you know you have a value on your work. And you can honestly say that I won't take a signing for less than this. Personally, I won't take a signing for less than 100 sometimes, most times, most often. But sometimes I do because I understand that the universe and God will not reward a complainer. And so if you're complaining all the time about fees, about what's wrong with this industry, about there's too many notaries, you won't get anything handed to you because you're ungrateful, you're being ungrateful, and you gotta have gratefulness and an abundant mindset. I talk a lot about this, and this video is way off into a whole nother field, but I'm okay with that because this to me is important. If you cross your arms, you can't receive anything, but if your arms are open, then you can receive. And so whatever you believe, whatever higher power you believe in, the law is the same. You get, you give and you get, you know, or do unto me as others would do unto you. So it's like whatever you're putting out is what you're going to get back. So if you're always putting out complaints, then all you're going to get back is the same thing. And it's not going to amount to anything. So it's not, I'm not here to bash anyone or to put anyone down, that is definitely not my intent. But I really would like for people to stop saying that in these groups. And if you are a new notary, and you're watching this video, or you haven't even got started yet, figure out what works for you before you take the advice of someone else who's already two months, three months, one year down the line. Because even some folks that are two months in may not have even had a signing. You notice that a lot of these people never post their their numbers in these groups. They just they just spew out stuff and you don't know what kind of money they're making. But I'm here to be real with everyone and I'm transparent. If you want to know what my numbers are, I'll be more than happy to share with you what my numbers are. How many signings this month I've had? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight signings. That's nothing to someone who's doing this full time. But I'm part time and I do this at my own leisure. And so that's what I've had for this month. There's no, there's no, there, there's, it's all transparency for me. So that's what I wanted to say today. Um, and again, if you um, are new in this business and you need help getting started, that is what I'm here for because what I do know I know how to do is I know how to start a business and I know how to keep a business running and I know how to get you to grow your business. Now, what I don't know so far 
is how to go direct because I've never went direct. I didn't have any desire to do that at this time because of a couple of reasons why. So I couldn't, I can tell you on how you can do it and how you can market yourself, but I can't give you my experience on that because I don't have any. But what I do have experience in and what I do have, I can share with you and I can give to you. And that's what I'm doing, not only on this free platform, but also as a coach, also as a mentor in my Facebook group and also through the classes. So that's that. Drop any comments below if you have any. I really love to hear from you guys. I love to talk to you back and I do I do respond to all the comments, okay? Um, I at least like them all. So drop a comment below. Also check out the description bar for the sign up for the class tomorrow um, and stay tuned for more content. I have some stuff planned uh, that's coming up. This is gonna take some work for me to put in in order to get out to you, but I have it coming, so. Until the next time, see you soon.